Hey, welcome back. We're doing another really exciting episode of Pages Promotions Virtual Book Festival Autumn 2020. This is a production of Indie Reads TV, and we find our home on CNM TV in Troy. Today, we're going to be talking with Jared Morningstar. He is a poet and short story writer. He's also an English educator, which is kind of cool. So we're going to have a conversation with Jared today about his writing work and a little bit about his background. And then he'll be coming back again later in the month for a longer discussion. So there we go. Jared, thanks for being here. Welcome. Hello. How's it going? Excellent. I'm so Excellent. glad you're here today. We wow. are going to have blast. Yes, um, we are. There, we have lots of people in the room today, so we're, we're going to have a good time. Um, you're probably, I've, I've read your work, so my guess is there's probably going to be some questions and the answers after we're done. But I'd love it if you could start with an introduction of who you are and how you got started on your writing journey. Okay, well, um, as you had said, um, I am an English instructor. I teach ninth and 10th grade um, English at a gifted and talented school. Um, in Saginaw, Michigan. And I also am an adjunct professor um, at Saginaw Valley State University and Delta College, where I teach English Comp and English Lit various courses. Um, and awesome. as far as writing goes, um, I have been teaching creative writing for a long time. Um, and I was uh, originally an English um, creative writing major at Saginaw Valley. And um, I wrote a little bit um, but then I took, uh, I don't know, like a few years where I wasn't writing much. And then um, I decided that I was going to start writing again. And I wrote a few poems here and a few stories there and uh, got them published in different journals. And, um, and then the opportunity came where uh, I had a chance to put together a manuscript and a book. And um, some of the pieces in the book um, are as far back as my college years um, that I've revamped and reworked. Um, and then a lot of them, though, have been recent, written relatively recently. And um, the fun of it, of uh, putting this book together, was that I, um, American Fries, Poems and Stories, was that... Um, By the way, I love the title. American Fries is a great title. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I thought that the, um, the title kind of fit my aesthetic a little bit, which some of the poems in, in the story I'm going to read probably will, too. But... Um, yeah, I had a chance to put together this book and I wasn't sure, I thought it was just going to be a compilation, but as it turned out, as I was going through the manuscript and just everything that I was going to put in there, I realized, huh, this really feels like different aspects of the American experience. And some of them are more loosely tied to that than others. Um, mm -hmm. but, but overall, yeah, like just, it was just funny, like everything seemed to fit. And so, um, it's been interesting because I never envisioned for the, you know, for a long time that I would ever put out a book. Um, I thought that I might write a few poems here or there, stories here or there and get them in journals. But um, it's been, it's been a lot of fun these last few months uh, getting this yeah. out there. And, uh, and, and now you've become afflicted with the disease we all share. That's right. <laughs> and it's fun. I got to admit of all the diseases I can think of, I can't think of a single one that would be better than this. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd like you to um, take, you know, 10 minutes or so. And if you could do a reading for us, um, a couple of your pieces, that would be great. And then after we're done with that, we'll open up the room to questions and answers. That sounds fantastic. All right, here we go. Um, I think we're going to start with poems. Um, I have a couple okay. picked out here uh, that I want to share with everybody. So um, we're going to start with a piece called Confessions of an Aging Teacher. Okay, um, before you begin, hold that thought for one second. I just want to let everybody in the Zoom room know, because this is poetry and short stories, we're going to do it a little bit differently, and that is pretend you're sitting at the orchestra, and there's a piece that has several movements, and we don't applaud in between pieces. We applaud at the end, and then we'll do our questions and answers and have a lot of fun. That way, we can save on time. Everybody got it? Awesome. Okay, Jared, go right ahead. The floor is yours. All right, this piece is called Confessions of an Aging Teacher. He held them in the palm of his hand, 
lifting them high above his head like Atlas, his knees buckled. Knees that were older now, knees that were forced to support more weight now, all on what would have been enough sleep at 25 and single, but not at pushing 40 with insomnia every night because he has a seven-year-old who thinks she rules the world and a seven-month-old who just figured out how to open kitchen cabinets and is addicted to electrical cords and he has to find money to feed them after bills are paid. Wait, how many lives am I holding? Looking upward, he saw dreams and vulnerable eyes. They couldn't tell he needed coffee, that his heart was pounding off beat, that his arms were shaking, that his knees were cracking. But he closed his eyes and kept his failing frame steady. I can't let them fall. I can't let them down. He knew their lives depended on him, just as his children's would one day on them. This next piece um, is called The Truth About Santa Claus. Santa isn't real, I'm sorry. Then my grandma turned and walked away. I sat there surrounded by toys and memories from holidays past, trying to stay warm as I cuddled a tattered blanket I'd had since I was a baby, one that should have been thrown out long ago. I looked up, Christmas lights were still strung, corner to corner along the ceiling. Those need to come down, it's almost spring, but I wasn't ready to put them away. Santa is real. He's real because there's no way my grandma could have afforded all of the gifts that were under the tree. Unless, unless that's why she ate ramen and Chef Boyardee and store brand frozen dinners for three months. Unless that's why she didn't buy those new clothes, the ones she desperately needed for work to replace her snagged pants and holy shoes. Unless that's why she took that necklace to the pawn shop, the last present grandpa bought for her before he passed away. And unless that's why I saw her up at 4 a.m. one night in December, her head in her hands, with a headache so strong that it added wrinkles to her face as she looked at lists and bills like a safe cracker with his son's life on the line, trying desperately to crack the combination to make the numbers work. I saw the light then, one brighter than any bulb strung along my ceiling or any star at the top of any Christmas tree I had ever seen. Santa Claus was alive and well, and as long as I live, her love, selflessness, and spirit always will be. Uh, the last poem I'm going to share um, is called High Speed Midnight Drive to Heaven. I fired up that old V8 and it hummed along to the sound of the smoking Chuck Berry riffs on the radio as bright lights guided me to the highway. And as I broke free from the exit ramp's grasp, I felt the power of Detroit muscle in my hands as I squeezed the wheel tighter and the speedometer read 75 miles an hour and rising. Hail, hail, rock and roll, I sang along to the music and the screaming wind outside, and my hands felt like old Chuck's blistered, callous fingertips as I held on to that wheel like I was bound for heaven and had to get there before sunrise. And no promise of a good night's sleep at a Holiday Inn was going to slow me down. Um, and then I'm going to read, uh, a short story um, called For My Next Trick. The audience was completely silent. It was as though death had possessed them as they watched the magician escape what seemed to be a watery grave. They feared his obituary would describe him as a victim, his life taken in a tragic spectacle. Many of them, in a way, could relate. Poor soul, someone said. He was just trying to raise money for orphans. But emerge he did from his cell, 
drenched, but a survivor. The ruckus applause was deafening. Some were moved to tears, including Mrs. Gordon, a teacher who was finally starting to reach even her most challenging students, many of them homeless, but who last month had been let go by her school district because she missed the submission deadline for her state required recertification paperwork. So did Mr. Howard, a single father whose wife had left him recently and who had lost custody of his children because his two janitorial jobs weren't enough to cover housing, food, and clothes for them, let alone daycare for his youngest son. Even Mrs. Tisdale, whose husband passed away from pancreatic cancer just last week. He was one of those rare cases. They had found the tumor quickly, so he would have had a fighting chance if only their insurance had been good enough. On and on he performed throughout the night, sawing women in half, pulling rabbits out of hats, and making volunteers disappear, along with their pessimism, fears, and sadness. Remember that magic is real, and so is the dream, he said. Even when it seems like life has be beaten you down, that our country and public servants are frauds, one thing will always be true. If you work hard and just believe, you can do anything. When the show was over, the crowd lined up to shower praise and, donate and donations upon the magician. Mrs. Tisdale even offered up her husband's gold pocket watch, which had been passed down by generations of his family, going back to their arrival in America. You made me believe again, she said. Thank you, ma'am. The children will be very happy. More kind words were shared and more hands were shaken as the crowd filed out of the auditorium, smiles adorning their worn faces. The magician was smiling too. When everyone had left, his assistant turned to him. You sure knocked them dead, sir. You really had that crowd eating out of your hand. Believers, all of them. Well, I believe we'll have plenty to eat tonight, he said as he laughed. And then he smiled, looking at the night's proceeds, thinking about how good the money would look in his bank account. Then he noticed Mrs. Tisdale's old pocket watch. The gold still had its shine. It'll be a hassle to pawn that thing, he thought, but it'll be worth it. Thank you. Visions. That's excellent. Um, I am so pleased that you um, found it within your heart to share your work with us. I know you're a brand new author and, and you're new to this book thing. Some of us, uh, many of us are, are old hats at this. So I, I feel very honored that you chose Pages Promotions and our virtual book festival to kind of launch your work. So thank you very much for that. Everybody turn on your microphones and we're gonna open up the floor to questions and answers and comments and discussion. Um, who would like to go first? Go, Kate. Hi, Kate. I loved, loved, loved the short story. Hello. I loved, I mean, I loved the poems too, but that short story was like, I'm enthralled. And then it was like, whoa, that was just, that was really, really good. I liked that a lot. Thank you. I guess my big question is, are you the cynic or are you the positive person from Santa Claus? <laughs> I am, I try to stay optimistic when it comes to my personal life. Um, I'm very, very happily married with wonderful kids. I love my job. Um, there are a lot of things about that that I love. Um, but when it comes to the outside world, <laughs> I'm probably a little bit more of a cynic at this point, sad to say. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Andrew, I, I, recommend you especially because I've read your work. I think you and Jared are, are kindred in one respect. There is a story um, in Jared's work that I think you need to read. Um, Which one? <laughs> well, that's, no, I'm curious. that's, I actually, that's I, kind I of the, book. yeah, that, that's kind of the trick. I think See, I'm going to lay this out there, and then those of us who are following on Facebook can engage in this discussion, but there's a piece in there that is slightly dystopian and a little scary, 
And Jared, what's the title of it? I think you're probably talking about a slice of American pie. That's the one I'm talking about. So, um, Andrew, so, so everybody put that one, a slice of American pie, put that on your to-do read list. Um, Jared's book is, is super accessible. It was a very quick, I think I read it in like, I don't know, an hour and a half because I wanted to read the whole book in one sitting because I wanted to get that flavor of everything kind of, you know, like you get a stew and you want all the pieces of the stew to come together. So I sat down and made sure that I had time to read it all at once. And that piece specifically for me stood out. So I, I would recommend that everybody um, find a copy of the book. And when we come back, Jared, later in the month, we will have that in-depth conversation about that particular piece. I can't wait. <laughs> so there, there's a little wet your appetite for everybody. Um, it, it, it was one of those things that just kind of caught me and I went, oh yeah, we got to talk about this one. <laughs> Um, does anybody else have any questions, comments for Jared? I, I just want to. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Deborah, go well, ahead. I mean, I just want to say I am in awe of anyone who writes poetry. Um, I've tried. It is mm -hmm. so, we just don't get along. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I hate that. <laughs> and I would love to be able to write it, but I mean, like yours was beautiful. And honestly, just, I mean, sometimes I even struggle to understand poetry and I felt like yours was just, it was there. And it was like, so real. Like, I, I do think your title just completely fits because I do think it is just like little snippets of everyone's life and everyone can relate. And I just, I really enjoyed it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, I, I, Deborah, poetry and I don't get along either, but I published mine anyway, because <laughs> I figured if I was going to put that much work into it, I was going to publish it. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm on the opposite end of that, Deborah. I, like, I really admire fiction and nonfiction writers, because I'm a poet, mm -hmm. and I think it takes so much talent to be able to think of a large story and flesh it out over a long period of time. And, and, and Jared, I think that's why I appreciate your work so much. So Jared and I are colleagues and we've been friends for a while now. And I really am empowered by how you can go from writing poetry to fiction and back again. Like it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of talent to do that because it's like looking at something through a different lens entirely. Absolutely. You know? So I guess my question would be, um, what is your process? Like if, if you are like, when it comes to writing, do you have to be in like a specific mode to write poetry or fiction or can you do them both in like short span of time? Like how, do you go through phases? And that's a really open-ended question, but I think you know where I might be going with I it. I do know, I do know where you're going and um it's for me it's complicated um because there are some pieces like slice of american pie where i wrote the first draft of that back in 2005 and i for 14 years like i kept messing with it and messing with it trying to get certain things right and had to fix this and alter this um and eventually it got to the point where it was published in a journal and later in the book um there are some pieces that I'll sit on. I wrote some piece in, pieces recently, uh, finished them. They're ideas that I've had for months and I just get around to like, oh, I wanna write this and then I'll wait and then I'll come back to it and eventually and I'll write it. Um, and then there are other pieces like the title piece for this book, um, which I wrote in about 15 minutes. Like I just sat down and just came out. Um, I, I think it really depends. Uh, usually, I think the theme comes first to me and then I'll try to sit down and just sketch something out. Um, but it depends. Sometimes I can do it right away. Sometimes I can do it in a couple of sittings. Sometimes I have to do it all at once. Like for me, at least there's no, um, there's no one right answer for that. Like it really all depends. Um, and so I hope that that's okay, Donnie, that that answer is oh. all right. That is totally okay, because I can really relate to that, too. <laughs> well, and well. you know what, Jared? It, 
it, it really is okay because every single one of us does it differently. And not, not one person sitting in this room right now approaches the craft in the same way. That's one of the reasons I'm so enamored with literature is because everybody does it differently and we all come up with different end results and it, it makes it super fun. So yes, that's the right answer, Jerry. <laughs> Good, thank you. Go, Andrew. Well, I'm just curious, you know, Jared, uh, have you done your submission yet for Simple Things? Not yet. You Not yet. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew. But, but I messaged Diana about this. I'm going to work on it. Um, I, I need to come up with a different idea and a little bit different of a COVID poem because I've done two of them, but neither of them really fit the theme of that anthology. And so I need to sit down and try to get another one out. And I've got things I'm thankful for. Um, that have come out and come into my mind uh, during the pandemic. So I know I've got something. It'll get done. I promise. Okay. Well, uh, I I know she she's got some now. She's got at least mine. So you know you need to get yours in. I will do yeah. that. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate the plug. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, we are doing an anthology about twice a year. I try to um, publish an anthology of collected works from local Michigan authors. Um, and each book supports uh, a charity. And this book um, is supporting the World Literacy Foundation. So we're looking for essays and poems and short stories that um, talk about gratitude in the time of um, COVID. So yeah, Deborah. Did you get mine? I sent it like quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I got, I yours, I got Andrews and I got a couple others, but we, we need to have okay. at least 10 to publish the book. And I think I've only got four right now. So anybody else who wants to contribute, um, your work will be helping um, literacy endeavors across the globe. So it's, it's if you go to the website at pagespromotions.com, um, there's a whole write up on the book and the, the um, charity that we're working for. So again, we're taking poems, essays, and short stories. Diana, that's all ages, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I have a few talented writers in my classroom that might... Uh... You know, something that we do, um, since you're bringing it up, one of the things that we offer is um, for every student that contributes to one of our uh, community service anthologies, we send you a certificate that is uh, redeemable for two hours of state community service so that they can wow. meet their community service hours for graduation. Um, that in mind to tell them. So I will send you a link and I'll post a link um, also on the Facebook page. Um, so any students, um, I don't know if they can collect hours um, before ninth grade, but I know ninth grade to, through 12th grade, this anthology will serve as part of their community service hours and we'll send them a certificate for two hours. So. Excellent. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry we digressed from your work, but thank you very much for, for talking about the book. It's, it's I mean, one of those things. It might be in there. <laughs> be all right. It might be in there. I'd, I'd love to have it. Um, and I'd love to see more of your work. So that would be awesome. Any more questions for Jared? Um, questions, comments about his work? Nothing? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're coming back. Uh, I'm doing so many of these. Jared, do you remember what date we're coming back for your other event? Uh, that's a great question. It's in the, it's, I think it's, I want to say October 29th, but I'm not okay. sure if that's right. It's in, it's well, in October. I don't remember either because we're doing like uh, 58 of these things all month. So check the event schedule on our Facebook page or on our website and you'll be able to, um, to see the whole schedule and come on back for as many of these as you can because we're having a blast this month. Um, and be here Monday. Yeah. What's going on on Monday? I feel so unloved. <laughs> Andrew's coming back to read on Monday. So, and I know oh, you just um, made me snort. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody hates me. Nobody likes me. I'm going to leave. We love you. Andrew, we love you. We love you, Andrew. Um, but like I say, I, I'm having so much fun this month. Um, we're having a blast meeting new authors and, uh, 
getting to hear some really great work that maybe we wouldn't be exposed to otherwise. Um, so again, Jared, thanks again for coming out. I appreciate it. And we will look forward to your next event. Um, so this is Jared Morningstar. His book is American Fries. Check it out. I will post a link um, on the Facebook page to the book. Um, we are Pages Promotions Virtual Book Festival, Autumn 2020. We are a production of Indie Reads TV and we find our home on CNM TV in Troy, Michigan. All of our events are rebroadcast on YouTube and then again they will be broadcast on CNM TV later this year. So if you didn't see it today or your friends and family couldn't make it, tune in later and come on and watch all of them. Right now we have over 90 episodes on our YouTube channel. So, yeah. Thanks everybody for coming. Have a great night. Thank you everybody. I appreciate having you all.